Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for this nice introduction. It's uh, really nice to give a, a pitch today. And uh, let me uh, show you my uh, data. Uh, so, uh, yeah, aggregation of uh, proteins and peptides. And in our case, I study uh, aggregation of protein tau is related to Alzheimer disease and uh, other neurodegenerative diseases and uh, uh, multiple uh, computational and theoretical studies has uh, shown, uh, has discovered uh, one of the most important peptide sequence named the PHF6 that uh, makes up the core of uh, amyloid, uh, of tau proteins amyloid. And uh, in uh, my research, we want to follow, um, we want to investigate how uh, different uh, capping groups influence uh, aggregation of, uh, of this peptide because it's often neglected uh, in, in research of peptide aggregation. And uh, aggregation uh, in, uh, in general, it's transition from uh, soluble peptides into unsoluble and highly ordered amyloid fibrils, which is shown here. And uh, along this process, there are multiple steps present and also uh, many intermediates uh, are involved, and um, we focus on the first stages of aggregation and on oligomers because uh, they consider to be the most toxic ones. And oligomers are essentially uh, it's a mix of uh, uh, different uh, molecules that have uh, different sizes, starting from monomer and uh, uh, going up to tetramer and so on, and they have different shapes. And uh, we, in order to study them, we need um, a tool. And uh, in our case, we have uh, ion mobility mass spectrometry, and in particular, trapped ion mobility it allows us to have information about the size, the shape of the molecules, and uh, also the construction formation by a collision cross section. And uh, how we treat our data, we have a mass spectrum that allows us to separate ions based on their MOZ uh, ratio. And uh, for example, we look at our uh, uh, ion of interest, like dimers in the chart, and we can extract the mobility of this ion. And we have uh, multiple peaks uh, in the mobility. And uh, they correspond to not only to multiple confirmation of this dimer singly charge, but they also uh, correspond to different oligomers that um, have uh, the same MOVZ, but different mobility. And uh, let me show you how it looks in, uh, in real life. So that's an example of acetyl cap peptide. It's a full mass spectrum here. Uh, we have uh, the, our parent the monomer, mm, singly charged. I use a notation, like uh, this is the number of monomer units, and that's uh, index is a charged state, and it's monomer singly charged but we also have monomer doubly charged and uh, we have dimer and trimer form. Uh, but if we zoom in more, because we're interested in uh, aggregates, uh, we actually start seeing uh, more oligomers. And if we zoom even more to the higher uh, uh, M over Z values, we see uh, even larger oligomers uh, start uh, to be uh, absorbed. And um, here I already, uh, give uh, the uh, assignment of the peaks, like uh, like here, multiple oligomers present. But uh, how I do it, I will explain um, uh, a bit later. And um, yeah, if uh, we want to summarize all this information about oligomers uh, that are formed and uh, that we can do in the table. So this is a table uh, on top, we have uh, charge states. And the rows are the number of monomers uh, that are present within the oligomer. And the green cells are oligomers that uh, were found, and yellow are the ones that were found but in the noise, and the rest is, uh, was not absorbed. And of course, we can do this for, uh, for peptides, as I was uh, talking at the beginning. And uh, it looks uh, that uh, acetyl cap peptides, those the first two, Mm, they have uh, they form more oligomers than um, uh, peptides without acetyl cap at, at the end terminus. And uh, we, it's good we can kind of see the trends, and that we also expect um, that from from the literature. And 
um, yeah, so uh, now I will show how I make the assignment of, of the science, and for that we need I'm a bit and a mess, and that can be uh, visualized with the heat map, which is here. Well, so on the heat map, we have on X axis uh, M over Z ratio, and Y axis is uh, inverse mobility, because that's how it's uh, shown in teams. And uh, uh, so species with high mobility are here, and uh, they're also more um, uh, compact, or they correspond to larger ligamers, and the uh, low mobility species are here that um, more extended conformations or uh, smaller ligamers with uh, lower charges as well. And so, yeah, what we see on the heat map, we have, uh, we can follow the charge state uh, uh, trends, let's say. So we have singly charged ions, we have doubly charged, triply charged, etc., up to uh, uh, aggregation region, how we call it, where we cannot see really separate different uh, charge states. And for, for further analysis, I will focus on um, this particular uh, M of Z value. So uh, to, to characterize the species that are present there. Mm. And I uh, what how we how we analyze this, we want to know what species are present. So we extract I mobility from this M over Z value and we end up with uh, three peaks. What are they? So for that, we again extract a mass spectrum from mobility. And we have a, a mass spectrum here with a, a distance between the peaks and isotopic distribution uh, corresponding to triply charged ions. So we know that uh, it also corresponds well to the theoretical isotopic distribution. So this is seven P plus uh, oligomer. And uh, the third peak, uh, again, we do the same. And the distance between the peaks is uh, six plus. So we can assign this um, to a ligamer with uh, 14 uh, monomers and six plus uh, charge. And uh, the peak in the in the middle, it's um, at isotopic distribution of both six plus and three plus. And then probably both of them are present uh, there, but um, they are most likely have um, in a different conformation, so more extended or more uh, compact ones. And uh, <clears throat> to uh, have uh, information about how, how, how they are really, uh, what are the ions and what are their conformation, uh, for that we need to uh, go to uh, collision cross section and we can uh, calculate it from the ion mobility. And uh, here is an example of uh, ligamers formed in case of acetyl cap peptide. Uh, here on the x-axis, I show the number of uh, monomers within a ligamer unit and their TCS values uh, in the y-axis. And uh, if all, all these uh, points, they uh, show different charge states. And uh, yeah, of course, as ligamers become larger and larger, the TCS value is also increasing. Uh, but uh, what is interesting to uh, notice that, for example, for tetramer, we have uh, species that are doubly charged, the green ones, but we also have triply charged, the blue ones, and um, they, within one charge state, they have different conformations. One is uh, more uh, compact and the other one is more uh, extended. And uh, why this is important? Because we want to predict uh, the, the growth of, uh, of oligomers, how they grow. Uh, for example, they can grow isotropically, uh, like uh, like uh, yeah, compact globular structures, which is shown um, here in blue. That those ligamers, or they can also grow in um, in another fashion, like uh, fibrils, and that is shown here on the uh, in in the yellow uh, uh, structures, uh, and. Um, uh, yeah, with that, um, I would like to uh, conclude. So, uh, what we've shown, uh, we've shown the different uh, difference in aggregation propensity for uh, acetyl cap peptides and non acetyl cap peptides. And we also measured this CCS uh, dependency on the 
number of monomers within oligomers. But to, to go further, we need to do um, extra investigations. And uh, first, we need to uh, calculate theoretical CCS values to really uh, to have a good assignment for our peaks and to compare them with our experimental values. And what we can also do, we can do uh, spectroscopy, for example, infrared spectroscopy, uh, where we can follow uh, the mm, spectroscopic features of beta sheets that are formed during aggregation. So, uh, for example, here I show on this graph that we have more uh, peaks in the spectrum starting to appear that can respond to beta sheets. And uh, in order to do that, we develop uh, now in our lab a uh, new setup for the synap uh, that have uh, op uh, optical access and we can use, uh, we can shine laser through it and do UV and IR spectroscopy. And uh, uh, with that, I would like to thank uh, my team at uh, Boo MS Laser Lab uh, and uh, MS Vision, our uh, partner and uh, of course the whole bioanalytical chemistry division and uh, of course thank you for your attention and I hope to see you at the Q&A later.